Hello Nuggets. Um, so I wanted to make a video today um, about depression. Um, so uh, this may depress you, by the way. It's, I don't think I'm going to t say that much that's depressing, but I'm going to talk about some stuff which if you do suffer from depression, you might recognize in yourself. And so I just want to warn you, that's what I'm going to be talking about. And uh, I'm going to tell you all of the truth. All right. So uh, I have had depression on and off all my life, as a lot of people have. Right? My mother suffered from clinical depression um, for her entire life. Um, my brother is undiagnosed, but I'm pretty sure he has depression as well. Um, but mine has been dramatic in spurts and then gone and then dramatic. And so I've always just kind of put it down to, well, that's just what happens to people. They get depressed. I wouldn't say I suffered from depression or previously I wouldn't have said I suffered from depression because, you know, something shitty happens. You're going to get sad about it. And I felt that that's what I had. I didn't recognize what I was going through with what I saw my mother going through, which is that she was always depressed and always fighting against it so even when she had like up days um i guess to some extent every morning was a gamble as to whether or not she would be depressed that day uh, she was mostly happy she she figured out a way through it but she got long bouts of depression but this year um which has obviously been really difficult for everyone uh, unlocked some of the doors that I'd closed or had just been closed and uh, I started suffering from depression and again we heard I, had let, I read a lot of stuff online about how everyone's going through this you know there was a lot of people who lost work and I couldn't find work and you know our income dropped down we went onto a forbearance plan where we're not paying our mortgage we're still not paying our mortgage um, <clears throat> We've only got like three months until we have to start paying it again. And and all of like, you know, <clears throat> all of everything kind of closed in on me a little bit. And I got depressed. And I spent a long time thinking, okay, well, you just got to get through it because everyone's going through this, you know, and, and you have a wonderful life, you know, and you shouldn't, you, you just got to accept the fact it's going to be a hard period of time. And then my mother died and that made it pretty difficult, right? That made it very hard, although it was a relief that she passed because of what she went through. Um, and then, and I started to gain weight and I started to feel unhealthy. I started to get aches and pains. I started to really feel my age. Um, yeah, my diet went out of control and I just started eating like crap. And then uh, at some point, I would say probably, I could actually look back through my videos. I would say about three or four months ago, maybe four months ago, <clears throat> I realized this was not going to fix itself. I needed to to just do something dramatic, right? Um, because I was having some really negative thoughts. So I'll talk about suicide. So uh, I thought about suicide, and this actually is true up until about six weeks ago. I thought about suicide every single solitary day. And it was a very, it's very odd. It's not quite waking up bursting into tears and saying I want to die it's the weirdest thing like I would when I would drive around to whatever go to the bank or whatever to go and check where how much money I didn't have like I would driving past a bridge dive, driving past a building I would evaluate it and think would it kill me if I jumped off of that and I don't know whether I was kind of registering stuff for the future right there's there's a Ralph's parking lot near us and at one point I was just feeling very sad and I didn't know what to do. So I just drove up to the top of the parking lot and just watched the planes because we're near LAX, uh, Los Angeles Airport. And as soon as I drove up there, I'm like, I wonder if I would die from jump from here. Like, and I don't know. I don't think I got close to suicide, which I have before, but that was nearly 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago now. Um, I don't know if I've uh, if I got close this time. It just, but it became part of my narrative every day. I just thought about it. And I went through that period of like, I think when you watch, when you see stories told about depression, when you see movies or you read books or whatever, it's this desperate bottom that you're in. And it's this kind of wailing of, oh my God, I want to die. That's not how I felt. 
I, what I felt was, and what was so disturbing, is I just felt there's just no point in this. I may as well die. Like, to me, it just sem seemed like, well, I can fight really hard for a future that I'm not excited about and I have no idea where it's going, or I can just put myself out of my misery. And I just felt like being put down. And so I lived with that for a long time, right? I lived with that and thought, this is just where you're at. This is just where you're at. It will pass. It will pass. Months pass. I'm gaining weight. Nothing's happening. I'm just feeling depressed. I stopped making videos for a long time. I just like, oh God, I don't know where I'm going. Until it got to the point where I started waking up um, and being able to get out, I, unable to get out of bed, right? And just thoroughly depressed and just crying my eyes out in the mornings. Um, it's just uncontrollable and just no idea what the point was in carrying on. So then I said, okay, I've got to kick some stuff into gear. This is, sorry if I rambled a bit. That's what happened about four months ago. And I thought, okay, so what can I do to fix it? Because I, I, I'm incapable of pulling my socks up because I don't want to. <laughs> I like, I, why would I? I may as well just die. I don't want to. But somehow I managed to start making videos again and looking at my diet. So I did like a thing on the potato diet and I did things on the carnival diet and now I'm on Jenny Craig. Um, because obviously I want to lose weight anyway, but I was also feeling I'm in trouble here. I need to eliminate some stuff from my life that's causing the depression because a lot of people might say, well, you know, your depression's not helped by the shit you eat. You got to eat healthy. So I'm like, okay, let's tackle that. Let's tackle the weight. Let's tackle the fitness. Let's tackle the discipline and see if that fixes the depression. So I did the potato diet, which requires an enormous amount of discipline. It really does. More than any other diet I've done. You only eat potatoes. And the only way you can eat potatoes is by cooking them. So it's like a huge part of your life. It's cheap, but it's hard to do. So that took a lot of commitment. And I was proud of myself. I made it through. You know, it was a couple of days where I was close or where I put too much oil on the potatoes, I think I did. But that's dramatic i mean i'm that's i'm being i was being pretty um hardcore about my diet so i fixed that so i fixed my diet i fixed my discipline and then i went off that and went you know what i'm so bored of potatoes i'm gonna try something else i'm gonna do i think i spent two days wondering what to do and then i went carnival okay i read up about it obviously and then i'm like okay i'm gonna try this and then i fully went into that and i tried really hard i did go off of that after about a week or two and I think one of the reasons I went off of that diet and started to lose my discipline is because I started to realize, oh my God, it's not my diet. I still want to die. I'm still thinking about suicide. Just thinking about it all the time, every fucking day. And I don't know, it's weird. I'm like, if I'm thinking of suicide every single solitary day and I'm not, I'm, I'm my, my discipline's improved and I'm eating well, and I'm taking the dogs out and I'm exercising every day. What the fuck do I do about this? I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to earn money. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I really don't have any desire. You know, I have, like, my mum's gone. I have no family. I have my wife, obviously, my beautiful wife. But I just felt like there's nothing else left in my life. There's no point. And I can't fix it. That's the most important thing. At which point, Laura said, I was moody as well. And Laura said, um, you need to seek some help, right? And she was very kind about it, but I assume what she really wanted to say is, this is fucking chaos. <laughs> You've got to sort this out, right? Because I was getting erratic and, and being angry with her and then apologizing and crying. And uh, there was a lot of that, right? There was a lot of anger and mood swings and being in my head and then half an hour later going, I'm so sorry, I don't know what's going on. Mania, right? A certain amount of mania, manic. Manic's better. So I spoke to my doctor and he put me on Wellbutrin, right? That's where this ends up. So I am on Wellbutrin now. This is called bu Bupropion. Can you see that? Hang on. Oh, why doesn't this camera ever focus for me? Look, it doesn't focus no matter what I do. Anyway, that's what I'm on. <laughs> okay, so I'm on that. Um, it's a generic for Wellbutrin. I take 300 milligrams a day. So I take 150 milligrams in the morning at 9 a.m. and then 150 at 6 p.m. 
And you can get like slow release capsules and someone had talked to me about that. Like if you forget to take your pills because there was one day where I forgot to. But actually I like taking it twice a day because my alarm goes off and it makes me present in this because I fought taking these and I have fought them many times. In fact, where in my, during my last massive depression where I tried to, uh, I tried suicide, um, I was put on Wellbutrin and it was a nightmare for me. It was horrible and I couldn't see it through and I was just like, it was, I, I won't go into details about what it was. It didn't work for me is the end result of it. So I fought being on any kind of um, antidepressants fought really hard i'm like you know what i can fix all of this myself i don't want to do it and in the end i gave up i'm like well i think i just have to accept the fact that you know no matter what i think about antidepressants or what my assumption is about antidepressants i need to accept the fact that maybe i'm just not capable of selling this of solving this myself so i went on to these four weeks ago i think maybe four weeks ago and um, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I could cry thinking about it, except I can't really cry because I'm on Wellbutrin. But, <laughs> but um, it's wonderful. It's completely transformed me. And um, I couldn't write. I could barely, like I said, get out of bed. I couldn't write anything. Couldn't write anything. I had no creative source whatsoever you know that whole idea that depressed people can write great music and write great books and all that fuck that i couldn't when i was depressed i couldn't even sit down i just stared out the window st stared out the window all day that's what i wanted to do just wanted to disappear couldn't wait to go back to bed even though i had insomnia and couldn't sleep i just wanted to lie in the dark and just let it go right no writing coming out of me so then i went as i said finally gave up went back went to the world butrin transformed the whole thing now it was a little bit of a difficult journey the first two weeks were really hard um eh, not really hard um but they were a little crazy let me put it that way so the first pill i took i felt they said my doctor said you know it can take about two weeks to settle down and you probably won't feel anything it needs to build up in the body well bullshit i felt it very first pill and i'm that wasn't psychosomatic i felt it i felt a zing i took it uh nine o'clock actually was my second pill because i got them during the day i took the six o'clock one didn't feel it obviously i went to bed that night depressed nine o'clock the next day i woke up zingy zing i was like whoa okay all right all right and i started doing shit i cleaned out my closet <laughs> first day on these i cleaned out my closet right but it was a little bit manic and i think my wife i think laura was a little bit like okay i think this is better is it i don't know my doctor had said two weeks though so i committed to two weeks the zing over the next few days started to disappear, right? Started to feel a little bit more normal, uh, a little bit more capable, um, a little bit more depressed again, right? Started coming back in. It's not that it stopped the depression in the first few days, it's that I was so pepped up that I just, I wasn't thinking about depression. I was thinking about, it was like taking fucking speed, to be honest with you. It felt like speed without the buzz. It was a weird dis disassociated buzz. So for, after about three or four days, I just kind of, got the, the zing going away and I started to feel the depression coming back. And then for the next three or four days after that, so we're talking about to the end of the week and the start of the next week, uh, paranoia, like deep paranoia. I was watching a football game, an American football game, uh, not a proper football game, an American football game with my father-in-law. He's not my father-in-law, but he's my mother-in-law's boyfriend, Jerry. Um, and I was so self-conscious I was w watching the football game and so kind of detached and all I could think is, he knows I'm weird, he knows I'm weird, I'm acting weird. Am I acting weird? I don't know if I'm acting weird. I think I'm acting weird. And it just, I started to freak out, right? And I said goodbye to him and he left for the day. He, I don't know whether he know, knew anything was wrong with me, it was paranoia. But at the end of that, I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. Look what it's doing to me. Look what it's doing to me, it's ruining me. But that night, again, something kicked in and said, I've got to see this through i've got to see these two weeks through i have to get through this i would say after about 12 days uh my wife was concerned because my mood swings were strong right i was still crying not as much but i was still crying i had dramatic mood shifts and uh very unreasonable arguments with her um using the divorce word several times right 
saying like, we got to fix this or we're going to get divorced and all kinds of crazy shit, right? My wife's like, this isn't working. You've got to get off these and find something else, you know. As she said before, like it's, it's a process, right? You've, to find the right meds. But we stuck through it and I said, and she stuck through it actually. I said, I've got to keep going. I promised two weeks. I promised two weeks. I'm almost there. I've got to keep going. And then miraculously at day 15, this just t completely evened out. Everything settled out. I feel exactly the same as I did about three, four years ago, right? Which is before I feel like my downward spiral started. I don't feel different. I don't feel like I'm in any way cloudy. I don't feel like my thought process has changed. I literally just feel like myself. I am, am I'm on my diet. I'm losing weight. I'm on the Jenny Craig diet. I weighed myself this morning. I've lost 11 pounds. Um, I'm diligent on the diet and really disciplined. I'm waking up in the morning. I'm writing every day. I'm writing four hours a day. Uh, for a contract, I have a contract to fulfill and I'm doing it and I wasn't fulfilling my contract by the way when I was depressed that was the other thing, I was in danger of losing the only income I had um, I'm actually writing three different things uh, I'm reaching out and communicating to people I just got a letter today from Tina, if you're watching, thank you it was a beautiful letter and the first thought I had that depressed me would have gone, oh my god, I've got to write back oh god, oh god, I've got to do something got to... this me is like, oh I can't wait I'm going to write her a letter like I just feel so connected to myself, you know. Um, so it's been remarkable. And if you're going through depression and you're a little anti antidepressants, I understand. If there's that feeling in you of like, ah, I think it's fixable. I think it's fixable. It's not that. It's not necessarily. Um, I'm not being judgmental of people who take antidepressants, but me myself, I think I can figure that shit out. Well, I gave up, I raised the white flag, and thank God I did, because I don't know how far it would have gone. Um, felt like it would go pretty damn far. Felt like I, I, I could have ended it all. So I'm on Wellbutrin now. I take a lot, uh, 300 milligrams a day. Well, actually, that's they say is a normal dose, but it's not like they just gave me a little nudge. My doctor, when, I, when he did the depression screening for me, I basically got 100 out of 100. And he's like, okay, we're, we're going to start with the, we're going to get you straight into this. So, you know, um, that's it. I just want to talk about it because, um, you know, my mood's also lifted because Trump's out of office. <laughs> you know, uh, this depression thing started about four years ago when he got into office. Um, not because I thought it was the end of the world. I just started to question the ethics of my country of choice. I just kind of questioned the choices that this country voted that guy in, right? I'm sure a lot of British people felt that way with Brexit, if you were on one side of Brexit. The point being that Brexit was such a dramatic change from what people thought it was, was going to happen. You went, fell into one of two categories, which is, holy shit, we won, or, oh my God. What the fuck about this country? It was like a wake-up call. I felt the same about Trump. And it's just progressively got worse over four years, right? Um, if you're liberal, as I am. I'm not a Democrat, but I'm a liberal. Um, so that was part of the depression as well. But then it you know, reached the climax. I took the pills. I'm back on the horse. So I just wanted to encourage you all to do that. To think about it. Don't judge it. If you are in a hole and... You've got some kind of pride saying, don't take antidepressants. Just bite the bullet and go, also, they're so fucking cheap, which is scary, which is why Tom Cruise probably says, like, don't, you don't need these. You, don't, you shouldn't take these. It's scary because this is nine bucks. And basically, I pay nine bucks per month to save my fucking life. All right, you little nuggets. I love you. Stay mentally healthy. All right, bye.